Hello, everyone. Hello. Hope, we're, hope everyone can hear us. We're going to give everyone another minute or two to log in, and Hannah and I will talk amongst ourselves for yes. a moment. Yeah, but thank you to everyone who's joining. We really appreciate it. We're excited to talk. Hannah, oh. how are you? Um, I'm great. Thank you. How are you, Shane? I'm really good. Oh, that's good to hear. <laughs> I'm not sure if small talk is our forte, uh, but we will. I'm glad people can hear us. We will officially join in just a couple seconds. Yeah, so if you do the meantime, maybe I'll just fill the silence with song. This is a very normal way to start a live stream. <laughs> I think I think we can start. I think that's probably enough. <laughs> was it my humming? Mm -hmm, that was enough seconds of that. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Welcome everyone to this Real Talk discussion. We are very excited to be hosting another Real Talk panel for SMA My Way, and especially thrilled to be coming to you live on Instagram. We are grateful to you for being here and to Genentech for providing a platform for us to connect with all of you in this way. Yes. All right, SMA My Way is created for the community, by the community, to support all people impacted by SMA. Our goal is to share practical tools and celebrate stories, experiences, and empower connections to help you live your life your way. You can find previous Real Talk discussions on smamyway.com. But first, we'd like to introduce Courtney Chase from Genentech, Hi, Courtney. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Jordy. Hi, guys. Hi, Shane and Hannah. Thanks for having me. And thank you for participating us in SMA My Way and being both a contributor and our host tonight for the Real Talk Live uh, discussion. So thank you. Thank you. Um, and really, thank you to everyone who's watching on behalf of Genentech. We appreciate the opportunity to connect with all of you in this way. And as Hannah said, SMA My Way was created by you and for you. And Shane and Hannah, we're so grateful for to, to you you and all of the contributors for all that you do and all the content. So thank you. I'm going to uh, turn it over to you guys to uh, to host the Real Talk. So uh, see you soon and thank you. Thanks so much. Thank buddy. you. All right. So today we want to talk about the role of caregiving. Now let's start with the obvious. We all need care. And as humans, our need for care is present throughout our lives. The care that we need as children, the care that our elders need as they get older. I mean, even the most independent human beings find themselves needing care at various stages of life. But for those of us with a disability, the role of caregiving is an integral, rewarding, and sometimes challenging part of daily life. Yes, our journey with caregiving is something that we've talked about at length in our SMA My Way stories and also on our own vlogs and social media platforms. And for many of you watching, it's also an important topic and it has a profound impact on your day-to-day -day life. So regardless of whether you are receiving care or providing care or both, it is really important. Yeah, and the balance of daily caregiving roles in our relationship is really important for us. We try our best to embrace our strengths. Yes. Sorry. I'm looking at all the hearts. It's so I know. Fun. I'm like, all oh my lot. gosh. Uh, <laughs> it yeah. is mesmerized. I am like, oh, hi. Uh, yeah. So in our relationship, planning out our days really helps. Shane handles all of the business and life management tasks. Yeah, all the boring stuff. All the boring <laughs> stuff. I handle more of the, the physical ones. <laughs> yeah, Hannah handles the physical stuff. And, you know, even if I can't, like, physically do the laundry... I can hang out with her and provide moral support to make it more enjoyable. Yes. I don't know if we'd ever call laundry enjoyable, but it is much more fun when Shane is hanging there with me. <laughs> so it's all about balance and knowing what each of you need, uh, which looks different for everyone. Yeah. And because, you know, it does look different for everyone, we wanted to welcome some of our SMA My Way co-contributors and friends yes. to join us. So first up, we have Tabby. And this is Tabby's first time joining a Real Talk discussion, 
but she is no stranger to all things SMA, by the way. She has some great content on the site and also just joined Hannah and I on the runway at the Double Tate Fashion Show in New York City. That was amazing and terrifying. Uh, she is a courier and an advocate and a singer and songwriter. Tavi, welcome. Hi, Shane. Hi, Hannah. Great to see you guys again. And I'm very excited to talk about caregiving as my caregivers are some of the greatest people I know. <laughs> That's awesome. We're really excited to talk to you. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the role caregivers play in your life? Of course. I live alone and I require the support of caregivers every day. I have a rotating staff, which seems like a very formal word. And of course, the support of my family and friends. Caregivers and the role of caregiving play a huge part of my life. I was listening to you two before joining and want to echo that embracing everyone's strength is so important as well as always showing appreciation and compassion, both for yourself and your caregivers. Sometimes it is as simple as taking time to learn which task each aid likes best and trying to accommodate them. Obviously, some things are done in every shift, so these are not requests related to those basic needs. I mean, I need to advocate for myself and for what I need, but I also want to be sensitive to any signals from my caregivers. Open communication is really what helps us the most. Yeah. And you know, like a lot of the community, face the challenge of being both the client and the boss. So how do you deal with that? As a client, I can be personable and it can help create a strong connection and comfort level outside of professionalism. We are friends. We have deep conversations, hang out. And as a boss, I can run a tight ship where nobody takes advantage of the environment, always performs their best, and work is divided and completed evenly. The challenge is facilitating both and not taking it personally when one drops. Yeah, I think not not taking it personally is key. For Shane and I, as a couple, neither of us is the boss. Well, really, oh, my God. But we do have to find that balance, and we find communication plays a huge role, like you said. So given that you are the boss, but also friends with your caregivers, are there days when you feel you have successfully balanced that, and what does that look like? I do sometimes feel like I am successful. I'm trying, at least. <laughs> we all have those days, right? It all seems to be working well. People work harder when they're happy. That's how I feel in my own job. And that's what I see with my aides. If they are happy, they usually treat me better and they're cheerful. So I can live my life. Mutual appreciation and compassion. That's what it looks like. Yeah, I consider myself very like primary caregiver is Hannah. Most of Thank you. Uh, As I, you should. <laughs> and I'm comfortable enough to be deliberate about checking in with her periodically to like assess how she's feeling, if she needs to make any adjustments to our like care dynamic. Um, and in fact, like we are just beginning to deal with this situation of being the boss and the client as we've recently been uh, interviewing caregivers to hire. And it is a strange dynamic. So do you have any like for us or anyone watching about, you know, who might be new to bringing in an outside caregiver? Yes, that is an adjustment. I have a few suggestions. In addition to taking the time to learn what tasks people prefer and adjusting what I can, I always say yes to their plan time off. Sometimes it's a huge stretch, but I found it's important not to negatively react to their unplanned time off, like calling out, because I'm directly affected as well as the other caregivers. Mm -hmm. The right thing to do is to welcome both. Life happens, things come up, there are unexpected changes. If we give grace to others, we're more likely to receive it back. I also make it a point to give my aides the work schedule that they like. Those aides who have been with me the longest, they do get seniority on these things and their schedule is consistent. The goal is to give them a 
schedule that works for them. The time off schedule varies. And when someone requests time off, I write that down in my physical calendar. And all it is, it is facilitated by good, open communication. And that's what makes it all happen. That is fantastic advice. Thank you, Kat. I know that I've had what I call a lifelong burden complex that each now uh, and, and I work hard for me to overcome. And I don't think it ever really goes away completely. Asking for help is just at times um, and for everyone, I think. So do you feel like it's different when you're asking for help as the boss versus when you're asking as a friend or a family member? It's always a challenge. Yeah. And it can be different, of course, depending on which hat I'm wearing. This challenge is actually the catalyst of some of my arguments. Part of advocating for myself is to ask for something I need. Honestly, I'm not an expert at all. I'm still working on the craft of overcoming this challenge. For now, I continue to express my feelings and concerns, even if it's going to lead to conflict. After all, sometimes it is healthy to argue with people you see regularly as it leads to a path of conflict resolution. But sometimes I quietly pray for strength and relief. I write my music, sing. Much of the music I'm inspired to write comes when I need an outlet for my feelings surrounding challenges. So I make sure to take time to indulge in my passion for music. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, we're all just going to do the best we can. And thank you for sharing your music with the world. Uh, while we do not write music, we also put a lot of videos and content, and we're so grateful to have that as an outlet. And of course, impact someone else when possible. Yeah. Uh, so I appreciate how hard you work on facing that challenge, of asking for help. And we know that needs and preferences change over time. So how do you address that? Well, funny you should ask. That is something I'm currently dealing with. Changes to my routine and needs right now for multiple reasons they make it harder on everyone as a result i require new routine tasks to help alleviate and manage to increase appointments for example this has implications obviously i have to remove some tasks and modify my previously flexible schedule in order to make life easier for all my aides i also make sure to explain my reasons for the changes so that my aides understand that i'm a but I'm just doing my best, as opposed to just switching things up. They see how proactive I am and that I'm doing everything in my power for my sake and for theirs. I also motivate, I like to think, because I show them my own work ethic and how I maintain my productivity daily by still being a contributing and meaningful human being. Yeah, well, thank you for a very meaningful human being. and. We appreciate you sharing and to the end of this important discussion, Tabby. So thank you so much for being here. It's been great. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Great. We, we so appreciate Tabby's perspective as an independent woman. And we'd like to welcome our next guest and fellow SMA My Way contributor, Kristen. She too is an independent woman. A, That's an independent woman. I know. <laughs> a community advocate and a mom. And I also want to say thank you to all coming in. Yeah, we're so, so much love. Really appreciate it, everyone. We really appreciate it. Kristen, hello. Hi, thanks for having me, Shane and Hannah. I was listening along with everyone else, and I'm so blown away by you both and Tabby in this conversation so far. As a full-time caregiver of my amazing son, Jack, I fully appreciate the different perspectives you all have. Well, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, how old is Jack now? He seems like such a whole deal. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Uh, Jack is eight, and I would agree. He's pretty cool. <laughs> As someone that was once a child with a disability, we want to start at the beginning, you know, because we, while all babies need care in various forms, obviously the realization that your child will always need a different degree of care is maybe a different journey than you anticipated. Yes. Uh, until you're a parent to a child with a medical condition, it's it might be hard to know 
the depth of your strength. Shane, as I'm sure your parents would echo, I'm a single mom, and but we also live with my parents and they help me greatly. I honestly don't know what I would do without them. Just ask my parents. Parenting is a never ending journey, uh-huh. but whatever you anticipate, asking for help is absolutely key. You know that saying, it takes a village. Well, I don't think they're truer words. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, have you, you guys used caregivers outside of you and your parents, Kristen? Yes. Uh, we have a lot of support and help from nursing and other caregivers um, since Jack was like six months old. I'm serious. Do you feel like it's been good for Jack to have caregivers in addition to family? Definitely. You know, uh, he's only eight, so he's still learning to practice kindness and self-advocacy but he is going to need all kind of care from different people in his circle and in the future. So finding teachable moments with many different people in his life now can only help him. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. That's so important. We definitely agree that having a larger circle of care helps any child build relationships in addition to their immediate family group. Uh, What about for you as the primary caregiver? How do you ensure you are also getting the care? (laughs) Well, I'm a part of the lucky few who probably get, gets many breaks. Um, Between Jack's nurses and grandparents, there's plenty of time for me to get myself in the right headspace, but caregiver fatigue is real. Um, When I am faced with it, mostly during rough times, like when Jack is sick um, or we have to travel to appointments for longer periods of time, it can be hard. Uh, I have two mom friends who also have children with SMA and we're very close and we often can quickly lift each other up. Um, even from afar. So I lean on them a lot. Yeah, I think leaning on, you know, friends and family in your trusted community is always a huge help. We turn to friends and family, you know, at times when I need to regroup, if I'm ill or particularly busy. Or annoyed at me. Or annoyed at shit. <laughs> <laughs> but switching gears a bit, one thing we've talked about in regards to parenting a child with a disability is finding the balance between providing care and empowering them to be as independent as possible. Yeah, I'm super grateful that my parents empowered me to speak up for myself and find my voice growing up. And Hen and I hope to do that as parents someday as well. What do you do to like find that balance? Sometimes it's as simple as like reminding him of his own abilities. Uh, for example, when Jack asks for things that I know he can physically reach and accomplish on his own, I remind him that he can do it. <laughs> And that he's strong and I'll be there to help him if the task is too hard. Um, He's usually pretty excited after he does something by himself. And that really does build his confidence and to do it again in the future. Yeah, it is a great feeling, even for adults. You (laughs) Um, you feel empowered when you realize that you're capable of doing something that you thought was going to be too challenging. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, also giving yourself some space to figure out what works and what doesn't and acknowledging what works best for Jack and I is really important. You know, my parenting journey is far different than what I imagined in a lot of ways. Um, And being ready to adjust as needed is a necessity. Uh, Things that I didn't think I would allow, like iPads, uh, um, I would allow, I had to allow because that might have been his only way and his only connection to life and learning. At some point, you let go of the hard and fast notions you had to allow for what really works. I think that is true for all parents, not just parents of a child with a disability. Yeah, and especially people who share a lot of our journey on social media, there are always opinions about how you approach things or what works for you. Uh, but Hannah and I have definitely felt that we felt that in regard to our care dynamic. And while we feel that care giving um, is something that strengthens our relationship, we do feel, we do face a lot of negative comments and opinions from people who question or dismiss our experiences as we share it. We try our best to ignore it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, 100% such a great attitude to take. Everyone has an opinion and ignoring those that don't support your journey is the best way forward. I'm so grateful for the support Jack and I get from my parents and our nurses. And I know no matter what anyone says, we wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. 
Uh, we said at the beginning that, you know, at some point, caregiving is a part of literally everybody's life. So we should all give each other grace to just do what we're doing, you know, without judgment. <laughs> and also important is self-care. So in our house, evenings are for fun, definitely. And we are deliberate about saving time for it. We look forward to that time. So what do you do for yourself when you get a break? Uh um, I usually have time every month to get my nails done, walk around the mall, or get together with friends. I also love to travel, and that always really resets my balance. And I feel extra lucky when I have time away to take a trip with friends or take ja take Jack somewhere fun. Yeah. Thank you, Tristan, for you know taking some time out of your busy life to chat with us. We appreciate your perspective as a mom and a caregiver, and we think that. Jackie is not only a cool dude, but a very lucky dude to have you in this life. I'm the lucky one. And thank you to you too. And to everyone watching, caregiving is a huge part of my life. And as long as we're all honestly communicating and connecting with each other, we think it is pretty, it is a pretty successful part. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about it. Thank you, Kristen. Bye. Have a good one. All right. Well, that was an amazing conversation. I know. I think we're all lucky to have had a chance to share, you know, this unique perspective about such a universal topic. Absolutely. The conversation, you know, in, the conversation in general is is the key. That's kind of what everyone was talking about. Yeah. Just talking about this stuff is so important. Talking to your, you know, people in your circle when you're involved in caregiving is important. You know, whether you're providing the care or in need of care or both, <laughs> uh, communication is everything. And none of us are mind readers yeah i'm still working on learning that i think but, yeah you could be a better mind reader <laughs> but if you're honest and open and you take the time to connect with your caregiving team regardless of who they are your yeah. wife your friend your family your professional letting people know what you need and keeping that communication line open in both directions can really go a long way in ensuring a successful dynamic Yes. And we'd love to hear all of your thoughts on the role that caregiving plays in your life. So let us know in the comments. I know a lot of people have been writing in. We've yeah. been reading that. Thank you again for all the comments. Yes. Thank you guys so much for sharing your perspective. Uh, if you didn't write a comment, you can send a DM. Uh, and if you aren't following SMA My Way on Instagram, you should. Why not? All of the wonderful people, you know, in this <laughs> panel today, and then so many more share so much wonderful, wonderful information there. So uh, check that out. Also, smamyway.com has all of the stuff that people have posted about caregiving and so much more. Uh, so thank you to all the SMA My Way contributors, too. Yeah, thank you to Tabby and Tristan for joining us today. Thank you to Janenta for all the writers that they support SMA My Way and the community. Yes. And thank you, Hannah, oh. for being my caregiver. You are <laughs> by far my favorite caregiver. Oh, the only, the one and only, but the favorite. You're my favorite caregiving recipient. My favorite caregiver receiver. I feel the same way. Uh, so thank you again, everyone, and have a wonderful night. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.